This is, um, yes, episode 162. So this is another um, kind of impromptu, as uh, some of you know, um, I was supposed to be on with my good buddy and JKD colleague, uh, Bert Richardson, but um, he's, um, he's unable to make it today. So uh, impromptu, we decided to set up another of our open discussion uh, slash Q&A um, deals. And so I'm going to be letting people into the room uh, as we go. So if you are, when you, if you're, I, I, actually, I'm not even sure if you guys are logging in on, um, uh, on Facebook, or if you're watching on Facebook, be sure to, to say where you're watching from. If you're joining me uh, in the room, uh, use the chat function and do the same thing. I think that's how it works, right? Um, and uh, if you're watching the final edit video over on the YouTube, be sure to like, uh, subscribe, and hit the notification bell over there. If you enjoy my work and you'd like to support the program, uh, visit jkdrebel.com, click on the Rebel Gear link, and uh, see what we have to offer. But of course, the best thing you can do is to share this video and spread the word about the Jikendo Dialogues. So um, um, from what, I, what I've, I've seen thus far, some of my uh, dialogue partners today will be, it, it's a motley crew of people, some uh, uh, who I already know, uh, some who I know of, and then uh, I think there are going to be some people who, to whom we are, we are brand new to uh, each other. So I'm going to uh, start opening up the, um, the, what do they call it, the chat room, I guess. And uh, let's see, let's see, let's see what happens. So, uh, well, that guy I recognize, right? <laughs> and uh, like I just said, there are some people who I know of, but um, I don't, we've not met yet. So, um, Mark, yeah, you need to press something and unmute yourself. Okay, did it. Okay. And just my luck, I end up with two marks. <laughs> right? Mr. Black, you need to uh you need to to uh click your um your microphone as well. Unmute. Okay, there we go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I have no yeah. idea. I have no idea what it is you're supposed to do to unmute yourself because because I'm always talking, right? But, uh, <laughs> it's good talking. It's good talking. <laughs> okay, Mr. Stewart, can you hear us fine? Yeah. Okay. All right. What happened to your hair, man? You you. Uh, uh, I'm returning to my hippie days. Well, you weren't that far, but man, you look good. Thanks, bro. <laughs> <You look good. laughs> All right. I wish I had all my hair still. <laughs> yeah, right. I wasn't. I wasn't sure if I could do this, but apparently it's still there. Oh, the hair? You mean? Yeah. 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 I, I, um, a lot of a lot of people don't realize. See, I trick everybody into into thinking that I still have a lot of hair, just right. by keeping it in this state. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, but both my brothers look more like Mr. Black. They have more of that hairstyle, but uh, all right, all right. As in, as in nothing left, yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm fighting that. I'm fighting that until the very last breath, man. I'm telling you. Yeah, man. Right. It, it was locked out. It was lockdown that did it for me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, no, there was no barbers open, so. <laughs> Uh, okay. All right. So, uh, Mark B, it's good to make your acquaintance. I've seen you on Facebook Hi. a little bit. Um, so tell, tell me a little bit about, about your background. Um, basically been doing, uh, been studying JKD, um, Kali since around 1997. Okay. Uh, yeah. Um, before that I actually trained in a little bit in Kempo, a little bit in boxing, but was just chasing the Bruce Lee thing. Mm -hmm. Uh, I was very fortunate to actually find a base in Sheffield that did that. Um, I, uh, I departed from the JKD in Sheffield for a number of reasons, uh, but I felt that was actually getting more, more. I was getting more info on the uh, on the seminar circuit at okay. that time. Yeah, yeah. So kind of like, and there was a lot going on at the club that I was at that I didn't agree with. So 
uh, I moved I moved on, started doing the seminars and bumped into a gentleman called Mick Tully. Ah, God, you yeah. poor thing. Yeah. You poor thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, didn't, uh, didn't he, he threatened to join us today? He did, I right? Yes, he did. Yeah. 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 But, um, well, I mean, we're four minutes past the hour and uh, Terry Valor's not here yet. So, damn. Um, that, yeah, that's that's strange, right? Um, actually, yeah, a lot of people did um, threaten to join us today. Uh, Paul Johnson, I think, uh, uh, Mick, um, uh, yeah, uh, other people. So, well, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what goes. All right. So uh, Terry's on his way. Okay. Terry's on his way. Because I couldn't figure out how to get on, and something was going on on my tablet. So I actually messaged him and said, "Man, are you on yet?" Is it, is it working? Oh. And, uh, he didn't realize we were on. Oh, okay. Uh, well, you know, I can only go so far, right? So, <laughs> um, <laughs> all right. So, yeah, from, I, I, I got I to gotta say, this is an absolute honor. This is just, a, I, I was even watching some of your training stuff yesterday on YouTube. This is an absolute honor. Totally. Oh, well, see, see, Mark Stewart, that's how you trick them. <laughs> right that's how you trick them you see they think you know what you're doing if you just talk a lot and you put your videos out that's how you fool them right so um so okay let me i'm looking here at facebook so apparently there's uh there's about 13 people watching us um wow. at, at the fool uh over on facebook right but um <laughs> for whatever reason they have um declined to join us live which is fine um i i don't know how to do it i could work it out but uh, i'm not gonna worry. but if any of you guys who are watching us live on facebook would actually like to join the group um navigate to my page um on facebook and um that's one of the places where i shared the link for the zoom call it's not password protected or anything uh any kind of vagabond could uh, make his way or her way <laughs> onto. Uh, <laughs> I get on here. I, right, I yeah. Know <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, so, uh, but I, uh, Mark Black, I saw an exchange between you and, um, and, and Steve Mosley about him covering for you if, if necessary or something. Is that? Oh, no, he, uh, he said, uh, he said that if you, uh, if you were stuck for having people on, then he'd jump on. I'd like, Man, if you're going on there, I'll, I'll jump on there and have a good convo as well. Oh. Um, uh, yeah, it was it was on about uh, basically if yeah. you're if you're struggling to get people on or there's a there's a gap somewhere, then no, you jump no, on and actually yeah. No, no, no. I'm not. I well, I mean, I don't want to. I don't want to jinx myself or anything. But uh, no, I'm not struggling for. We're on episode 162. We're not struggling yeah, um, uh, to get people on at all because every one of those people I could revisit. So that would take us up to three hundred yeah. and 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 um and twenty four, right? So um, plus I can always call on Mark Stewart. Yeah. Right? <laughs> he'll, he'll he'll always come. In. As a matter of fact, um, Mark uh, put me in touch with. Uh, there we go. This is another one whose whose hairstyle is um, is evidenced by lockdown. <laughs> hey, hey, Dwight. Hey, Mark. Hey, Mark. Hey. Right? That, yeah, that's a, that's a, that's another one. Um, so yeah, so Mark Stewart put me uh, recently in touch with um, with Dean Lawler. Now, Mark, let me ask you this: Where would I know Dean's name from? Um, well, he he was a pretty good friend with Larry Hartzell when Larry went to Australia. Okay. And so, I mean, that may be a link that you may have heard it, but um, also, yeah, he was one of the first guys from Australia to uh, do the full contact stick fighting in the Philippines. So a few different areas you may have heard him from. Okay. All right. Yeah. Miami in the house. Mm -hmm. Dax, click your microphone. We can't hear you. So this is uh, Dax Manuel, who is... Uh, fellow Miamian, um, but we can't hear him. Hello. Okay, now I got you. But, How's it uh, going? I'm good, man. 
What's up? Doing good, guys. Hey, listen. So, it, um, Dax, last year you had told me you were going into the military, but I guess I guess you changed plans on that. Oh, I, I, I I'm injured right now, so uh, I'm kind of like on standby. Oh, did you hurt yourself fencing? In, in case you guys don't know, <laughs> Dax is uh, Dax is the 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 progenitor of um, Jun Fan fencing, right? Is that is that the moniker that you use? Oh yeah, you know it's just uh, I I try to um, you know uh, study fencing uh, from from different cultures. You know, uh, obviously, you know the Filipino martial arts has a big Spanish influence, but uh, you know Bruce Lee also was big into the Western fencing. So I just try to study uh, as much as I can from 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 all of it, really. Yeah. So so in case you guys don't know, Dax is a guy who is not at all averse to mixing it up on Facebook. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Dax is a, but one thing that I one thing that I admire him because um Dax, you've been you've been in JKD how long now? Um well maybe like probably like seven years. Before that I, I did a lot of uh I did a lot of like judo, right, wrestling, and and sea lot. I did sea lot for like three years before I got deep into Jeet Kune Do. Yeah, and then just started focusing on Jeet Kune Do for, for the last like, five, six, seven years, something like that. I would yeah. have to think about it. See, I I see. So this is this is what I want to say about about Dax Manuel. See, so he's junior to many of us. But one thing that I think us old timers can learn from the new kids on the block is to speak up. What I like about Dax is that if he says something and then somebody schools him and corrects him on his information, he's, he, if, if necessary, he apologizes and he thanks and goes forward. Yeah, it, definitely. It, it's not at all, oh, well, blah, uh, blah, 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 because he recognizes that, well, let's see. Mark Stewart, let's see, so Dax has been in JKD for seven years. Mark Stewart has been living for 10 times that. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah, I'm 108 right. now. I just turned 108. Right? Okay. Yep. And he's still um, got the look. Yeah, man, look at him, right? He's making <laughs> everybody else, on. he's making everybody else yeah. look bad. <laughs> all right. Okay, so um, so all right, so now we're gonna. We're, this is where it's gonna get um, interesting because I'm gonna admit people uh, whose names I don't know, and uh, well, we'll see what happens. All right, so I have no agenda. Um, as a matter of fact, did I ever tell anybody that one of the taglines for the Jeet Kune Do dialogues is? Um, uh, having no agenda as only agenda. I tell you that. <laughs> All right. So I have nothing planned to um, to discuss. So um, let's go around the room. And uh, Mark Stewart, you you bring something up. Yo, uh, yeah, I I think it'd be appropriate to talk about online instructionals. Okay. And uh, how, how everyone's doing it. And uh, um, I think we're all doing it now. <laughs> uh, no, not all of us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> because there's, there's some of us who, uh, who uh, spend way too long in research, way too long yeah. trying to perfect it before they launch it. Right. Yeah. And I am guilty of that. Oh, I thought you were doing stuff already. No, I, I mean, I, 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 have, um, I have a few people that I do Zoom stuff with. Yeah. But in yeah. terms of launching, yeah. like on um, Teachable or Thinkific or whatever the platforms are that... Um, that, that oh, I see what you mean. Yeah, I was just referring to the Zoom, Zoom stuff, really. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I'm a Zoom master, man. Yeah, man, you are. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Zoom master, yeah. Uh, is anybody else doing stuff? Uh, I am, or I, at least I did for, for last year. I had a, a like an online video that, that I was selling, like a tutorial for uh, for French uh, dagger fencing. 
Okay. And um, the, the way I did it was I, I sold the actual product, but I, I had a, a direct line to me that you could ask me any questions on mm -hmm. the material. And, mm -hmm. I, you know, I, I could, like, re-record something if you, if you had a question on it. So, right. um, you know, people seem to enjoy it. And um, they would send me videos. So I was big on, on them actually, like, you know, trying to apply it. You know, so I would send them videos. Instead of them doing drills, um, you know, I would ask them to, to send them, uh, you know, after you practice your drills, to send me videos of you sparring. And, uh, you know, that way they, they could see for themselves that the moves are actually working. Okay. You know? All right. Terry, you doing anything? Uh, no, I'm training online. So I'm doing for Bream stuff. I'm training with Neil McLeod. I'm teaching wise, no, not nothing. Okay. Mr. Black. Uh, some one-to-ones on Zoom. Um, still trying to figure this camera thing out, man. Really. <laughs> um, yeah. Trying to make myself look okay on camera and uh, getting it right. Yeah. Um, that's funny. Yeah. I saw I saw, a, I saw, saw something online the other day about how to make yourself look better, right, on FaceTime or whatever. But, yeah. um, but I don't need that. Look at this. <laughs> you know, um, I, I, I don't I'm need pushed. it. I don't need that. Plus, I, I find that there's there's so much online now because everyone's got online. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, uh, you've actually got all the um, I, 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 this must this may be myself. You got all the you got all the Inosanto full instructors online now as well. Mm -hmm. So I've kind of like I've done one to ones and stuff for my for the guys that want them from myself. But I've been following all the other guys and I'm gonna look at what uh, Guru Bob Breen's been doing, Phil Norman. Um, uh, been catching up with Rick Young occasionally. Yeah. So I've been checking out what they've been doing because yeah. they do it a lot better. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it's it's an interesting thing, right? See, the younger generation, they're more um, on top of the the technology, right? The yeah. older generation might be more on top of material, you know? But I think the sweet spot is when you can bring them together, right? Yeah. And where... where yeah. The younger, the younger guys get depth of material and the older guys find out how to talk to, <laughs> to you know, yes. how, how yeah. to do on, online stuff. That, that type of thing, I think, is, um, is something that, that we need in order to keep, um, to keep moving the art forward, you know, because... Um, yeah. It's, I, I think sometimes in the JKD world, you can find a lot of people who actually do not want to evolve. If, mm. if, yeah. you, you know what yeah. I mean? If you yeah. look at, if you look at yeah. some of the discussions and some of the comments and, and, and what have you, there, there's, there's still way too much um, um, pettiness for one. And, yeah. um, and, you know, demonizing of, of other people and, and other people's approach and what have you. And none of that does anything to, to move the art forward. Now, I'm not saying that that exists only in the JKD world, because that's not true at all. But I'm part of the JKD world, so it affects me uh, more. So, Mark, you, you, what's, what, what is the thing you're doing with um, your latest project? I, I think it's, it's building a location or something? Oh yeah, yeah. I'm doing a fundraiser, an online shadow boxing event on a private Facebook group, and just charging a real low rate of ten bucks a head to view it, mm -hmm. and ten dollars per category to be a contestant. We're having shadow boxing in JKD separately in JKD Muay Thai, uh, single blade, double blade, single stick, stick, double stick. San Chin Kata. <laughs> and, <laughs> and, and then least but not last, drunk drunken fist. Okay. All right. So tell everybody, tell everybody why San Chin Kata, because they might not know your connection to it. Yeah, well, I originally started in Weichiru uh, Karate, Okinawan Karate. And then I also researched uh, the Fu Fujian uh, uh, Chinese styles, which are <clears throat> are the source of that San Chien, uh Zan Chan, whatever you want to call it, yeah, the three battles. <clears throat> have Have you seen um Have you seen the the recent um, what's the guy Karate Karate by Jesse Jesse Encamp? Yeah, yeah. Have you seen his recent stuff talking about the connection between um Philippine Kali and arts? Karate and yeah, yeah and the yeah. Okinawan stuff? Have you seen I, that? I, 
I don't buy it. <laughs> <laughs> it's similar. It's similar. Um, yeah, it's very similar, but, you know, it's that Kuntao resource, you know, that it's what they call gung fu in, in Southeast Asia is Kuntao. Right. That's what it is. Yeah, because we have to remember that the, the Shaolin, you know, and, and the Chinese, they, they, they went down to a lot of those islands, you know, like you said, Kuntao is, is the Chinese extraction. And uh, they influence a lot, you know, it, it could definitely be in there. You know what I mean? Um, how much, how much it got, you know, influence, um, you know, that, that's that's hard to say. The harder you go back, obviously, the harder it is to, to track, you know, how much influence there was, so. Mark, are you saying then that all it is is that Jesse Enkamp discovered that motion is universal? Uh, yeah, that's my opinion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. You're yeah. such a Although, dissident. to be fair, guys, <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Mr. Mi uh, Mr. Miyagi's secret in Cobra Kai, Mr. Miyagi's secret in Cobra Kai was a gunting. If you, if okay. you watch the end of season three... No, I have not even watched the beginning of season one. However, <laughs> however, however, I do have a subscription to Black Belt magazine, and um, the, the the three principal characters are on the cover. Story is about them, and I I was reading um, in the bathroom. I was reading. Um, about choreography for their characters so i haven't gotten to that but but so in because daniel san he's like the leader of mayagi do now yeah, or something yeah, yeah okay yeah and and he's doing gun things yeah uh, so so what happens is you get, uh, i'm not gonna spoil this for you <laughs> <laughs> no go ahead and spoil it i'm not gonna watch it <laughs> <laughs> Um, he, he travels to Okinawa. He, uh -huh. he finds the guy that he fought in uh, Karate Kid 2. And um, he's uh -huh. like, looking for the secret. He's looking for the secret. Wait, is it, is, it, is, it the, is it the same guy? Yuji, Fu, uh, Yuji yeah, Fujimoto? Yeah, yeah. It's the same yeah, yeah, actor? Same guy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. wow. Yeah. That's cool. And so, yeah. Yeah, so they have that like, little kind of like comical confrontation thing. He takes him to the dojo and all this kind of thing, and, and it's they, they've even got a photo of uh, Gucci Funakashi in there, uh -huh. um, and yeah, and uh, Chojun Miyagi. So they put the whole history of karate up there. But um, well, that's like, cool. Uh, yeah, it, is, it really is. Yeah, um, but what they got on there is, he says, no, uh, Mr. Miyagi didn't teach you everything. So he, he beats Daniel's ass a bit, right? <laughs> he, he beats him up a little bit. And then uh, it shows in the secret, and the secret, um, even if even if the form is a little bit off, yeah. is a gun ting. That's funny. And Daniel Daniel uses it at the end of the final episode to beat up Chris. Wow. He uses a gun ting. That's funny. Yeah. Okay, so see what so when we when we hang up, I'm gonna I'm gonna go do the research on who um, the um, the uh, fight choreographers are because I, I heard something about Simon Ree and Philip Ree and I know that they have worked with some of our people right does anybody anybody know about that uh, Simon Ree and Philip Ree uh, did yeah. a lot of stuff or did do a lot of stuff with um, uh, Guru Baliki I believe okay they're very, they're very close they're very tight okay. yeah right see uh, so what they worked on I do I could not tell you yeah, it's it's um it's it, it, it that that to me is one of the one of the um one both fr well not frustrating but it is an interesting thing that um so much of what we do and by we I mean those of us who in whatever way are influenced by Inosano so much of what we do is in Hollywood and um, so many people are unaware. Because we yeah, never no do a good it. job. We never go, do a good job of claiming our stuff, mm -hmm. you right. know. So Daniel San will do a gun thing. <laughs> we will look at it. and We'll go. Well, that's a gun thing. But in Cobra Kai, they're not going. They're going to call it Miyagi Do secrets. Yeah. And then, yeah. And then, yeah. Because the general public yeah. is of general level of intelligence. Yeah. Then pop culture, dude. Pop right? culture. Right. At some point, yeah. they're gonna come to us and go, "Oh, 
So, you know, in Okinawan karate, there's this thing called whatever. I mean, do they call it gun thing? Do they even give it a name? Uh, that, I didn't, that I didn't pick up. That I didn't yeah. pick up. Yeah. Well, you know, guys, hey, uh, it does really exist in Okinawan karate. I knew you were going to come up with that. You know that's not true. Yeah, it does. <laughs> <laughs> man it's you motion, know that right you you do. mark once again are you saying that motion is universal <laughs> well i mean it's 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 remember remember our our, our last dialogue together it's it's still a yin yang thing it's it is, <laughs> it's, it's, it's well, at the same time that it's um you know it, it's found in uh, numerous places uh yeah it's just a minor it's a minor strike you know and they hit they hit the nerves you know, they'll, they'll like you have this this kind of circular movement. This it's like it's an inside sweep and check, basically, right? Yeah, and yeah. You bang them, bang them with it, and yeah. bam, that's it. Yeah. Ah. Well, I, I'm check this out. I'm reading this book right here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Um, Fancy boxing and wrestling. This was written in the late 1800s, and it's interesting because he's it's it's right. You know, it, it's. He's talking about uh, bare knuckle versus the newer style that's coming out that, that at the time was glove boxing. Yeah. And he was talking about how, how, how different they are. And one of the techniques he's talking about in uh, English bare knuckle boxing is when someone throws a punch, a jab, you just turn your elbow out so that they could hit the, the tip of your elbow, which is, you know, basically uh, doing our, you know, very similar, the same thing as the Filipino destructions. So yeah. uh, I, you'd be surprised at how much stuff carries over, you know, and, and, and uh, like you're saying, you know, martial arts is universal. Dax. Yeah, the, old, the old style boxing has got some really good stuff in it. I've been reading yeah. that. Dax, um, it, it, tell me this. You're like 10 years old. So how do you get these books? What is your <laughs> secret source for, for books that are 200 years old, man? You're like 10 years old yourself. <laughs> well, in... Uh, in the world of, uh, of HEMA, so HEMA is Historical European Martial Arts, right, which looks into uh, old fencing manuals, old wrestling manuals, old boxing manuals. Um, that's how basically I, I kind of like learned a lot of this stuff. I have a Facebook page, you know, not to plug too much of my, my, my own stuff, but uh, <laughs> even from that, even though it's my page, so many people have contributed to it that have yeah. taught me um, stuff. And actually, the yeah. reason, you know, actually... To, so this book in particular, there's a review on it by G Kundo guy on YouTube. So I actually found out about, about this book in particular through another G Kundo guy. Ah, sweet. Yeah. Um, are you secretly just between me and you, Dax? Are <laughs> you are you secretly trying to um, reproduce the Bruce Lee Library or something? Man, I, it's it's getting there. I got a lot of books. <laughs> it's almost there. Yeah. <laughs> well, okay. Everybody, let Richard Torres know that Dax Manuel is coming after him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Um, so, I got to tell you about something that I saw in um, in response to last Wednesday's. Um, broadcast. So I, 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 I said the, the title, the title ended up being um, uh, Jeet Kune Do, What We All Have in Common or something. The mm. working title was The Divisions in Jeet Kune Do, right? That's, that's how it, it actually started out. But um, um, Davis Lear made a comment um, uh, on there and uh, for those of you guys who don't know uh, Dave, Mark, you know Dave from your LA days, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. All right, so Dave Lear is an original member of the, uh, the Kali Academy back in the 1970s. So, you know, my whole take is this. When somebody from back then talks, I just shut up. You know, I got, I got nothing to say. It, it, some somebody who who trained at two three zero one eight South Normandy Avenue. I just I just I don't have anything to say. Um, but not everybody has that approach. And so what ended up happening is people talking about well 
I wouldn't listen to this guy. I listen instead to Bruce, All right? And so the contention, and it's the age old contention that Bruce Lee said, boxing, fencing, and wrestling. If anybody says anything beyond boxing, fencing, and wrestling, then that's not Jeet Kune Do. Okay, that's the take, right? Now, it was a little bit more disparaging than that, but I'm not gonna, I'm, I'm not gonna deal with that aspect um, right now. But just for fun, let's start with Terry, who's been silent, right? Okay. <laughs> Just listening. So a guy comes to you and he says, you know, Terry, G Kondo, man, just like Bruce said, because, you know, we're on first name basis because Bruce and I were homeboys, right? So um, <laughs> boxing, Wing Chun, fencing, that's it. What do you say? For a time period, absolutely. But okay. that time period was was in a certain timeline, wasn't it? So if you read the Tao, or even the commentaries in Martial Way, it's kind of it's in a, it's it's it starts with that. But the more we sparred, and the more you can read his notes, you realize it wasn't it wasn't just just that. Because once you start sparring, you start clinching, you start grappling. It's a natural progression, isn't it? So, it, you know, you can't just use them free arts because they don't have all the answers, especially when you're looking for totality. You know, there's, there's massive holes in just that. So how, how, so then how do people who claim to be ardent followers of Jeet Kune Do, what is it that constrains them or, or constrains their, their, their thought process and limits them in their idea when the tagline is having no limitation as limitation. Mark Stewart, handle that one. Uh, tribalism, <laughs> tribalism, man. Tribalism, cult, cult worship, you name it. Uh, but you know, I, I see it as, um, I see what Bruce did. I agree with, with Terry in regard to, in a time period, it was Wing Chun fencing boxing. And, um, but I think ultimately it was a deconstruction of systems or the deconstruction of styles and the uh, kind of the dissolving of the whole notion of styles. Right. Yeah. For sure. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, Mr. Black, contribute. <laughs> and I would agree. Uh, it's the time period. Uh, Bruce was evolving no matter what. Uh, he was looking into everything. So uh, the, for the time period, yes. For going forward, um, you got to look at everything, even as far as, I mean, I, I, uh, I have a, a, a curvature of the spinal cord, so I have to look at what I, I can work with and what my, uh, and what my abilities are mm -hmm. in the same way that Bruce did. And, mm -hmm. yeah, you can look at that time period and say, yeah, we're going to look at those criteria, but going forward, Bruce was always evolving, so you, you still got to go with his mindset of what he wants to do and where he wants to take it. I, I, I also agree that uh, the early days guys are sticking with a certain formula. I don't know whether I'd go with the occultist thing or whether I'd go with a uh, the, uh, any kind of like uh, group structure for it, but I think it's just um, I think it's just overall paying a respect to that particular time period, I think, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that's what I've, I've never actually come across any great divide between either groups myself. Um, I just think that um, the people that are doing original Jun Fan JKD are just happy with it. Mm -hmm. And just didn't want to move forward with anything. Well, that is important, uh, you know, to be, to be happy with whatever it is that you're doing. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, uh, yeah and I say if, if, if they're happy, then more power to them. Right. All right, Dax, what do you say? So <laughs> I'm going to say the problem is with some of those people who try to limit uh, Jeet Kune Do to like, oh, no, Jeet Kune Do is this, this, and that. 
uh, for example, you know, if you want to say it's 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 uh, fencing, boxing, wrestling, or fencing, boxing, and and whatever, right? Mm -hmm. Is that some of the people that say that aren't really good at any of those? Are you know? I mean, like they don't know anything about fencing at all. You know what I mean? They'll say, yeah, you know, fence, and then they'll say something, and I'm like, that's absolutely wrong. I, it's obvious that you've never fenced a day in your life. Now, mm -hmm. however, I I came into Jeet Kune Do from, from you know, uh, Paul Vunak, Larry Hartzell, Eno Santo uh, 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 type lineage, right? Mm -hmm. But your page, the I Love uh, uh, JKD and everything that you've done, Dwight, has, you know, in, in, in more recent years, you know, opened me up to see that, you know, and at first I resisted. I was like, these people are freaking crazy. You know what I mean? But anyway, you know what I mean? Uh, I've come to accept and not argue as much and just realize that, you know what? There's, there's people who've trained, who train with Bruce Lee at different time periods, who experience different things, who came to different conclusions. And all I could say is that I teach my JKD. You know, I teach the way I interpret it. But nobody can do JKD for you. You can't, how can I tell your body type and what, you know, if you like Kali over fencing, if you like Muay over, you know what I mean? I can't tell you what's going to work best for you. Or, you know what I mean? I could guide you as an instructor, but I could only teach you my Jeet Kune Do. And, and, and there's, you know, any one of these guys on here, you know, uh, will teach you their Jeet Kune Do and it would be just as good. And it's still Jeet Kune Do, even though if it's something that I'm not teaching you. So that, that's something that I've come to realization thanks to your page and thanks to your, to, to your uh, uh, um, videos that, that I've learned a lot uh, from the broader world of Jeet Kune Do. Yeah, well, now that's going to be interesting because the second, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong on this, but the second that people start talking about your Jeet Kune Do, my Jeet Kune Do, or whatever. There are certain people whose, um, what do they call it? The, where the hackles, the hackles on the back of their neck come up, right? <laughs> yes. Mark Stewart. Yeah, is, is he you there? Know, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, that's 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 the that's been the problem on, online with some of this live stuff and with all the. Uh, do y'all notice how, how good how good Mark Stewart is at being still? <laughs> it's it's yeah no it, 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 it's it's like I'm like maybe his internet froze or something. <laughs> yeah, you know uh, one thing uh, Eric Paulson posted Green something the other day, I kind of I kind of um, said something controversial, but no one bid on it, and um, I was I just commented that simple, direct, and non classical is not the same as complicated indirect and multi-classical <laughs> <laughs> no one no one been on it no one been on it i couldn't get it uh, there's a difference between cross training and jkd though isn't it yeah there is you can do, yeah. you can do both at the same time yes. but like yeah. cross training yeah. is like i look at it as a, it's like an education so you educate yourself on the ground with weapons with elbows with knees and then you just and then you, you feed into your jkd and see if spar it and see if it fits for you. You know, there's certain things that I can't do that, you know, so but I, I prefer, like when I'm on spa, my trapping is more wrestling based. Because I can wrench off it, I can clinch, I can hit. So the packs all up sounds great instantly, but the, the, the wrestling, it, it holds them longer. Okay, wait. Control them, but, okay, sorry? wait, wait, Terry. Yes. You said there's a difference between cross training. Yes. And Jeet Kune Do training? Uh, Is that what you not said? Not training. Different between cross training, cross training and Jeet Kune Do. There's a difference between cross training and Jeet Kune Do. Yeah. Okay. You have to explain that to me. No problem. It's like going to school, right? So you learn English, maths, science, geography. Okay. So you I failed all so of them except English. <laughs> but, but you're, you're educating so you might educate yourself in Thai boxing wrestling Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu combat submission wrestling or CLAP whatever you, so you, you're educating yourself in all the different arts okay. um, and learning specific things with different ranges 
You know, you might be in the back, they might be standing up, you might be standing up there on the back. You know, so you're learning this stuff. And then when you're sparring it, when it's real time, that's JKD, isn't it? That's instantly testing it, instant reactions, adapting to what's in front of you, mm. absorbing what's useful, discarding what's useless at that time. Not in terms of taking grips from arts. It's absorbing what is useful, discarding what is useless, and that is specifically your own interpretation at that time, in real time, what's in front of you, adapting to that. But isn't, okay, but I, I still don't understand then what's the, because it sounds to me as if the cross training, right? The training in these multiple arts or multiple systems or whatever, that's just an aspect of your Jeet Kune Do training. That's just part of what you do as you train JKD. So there is the, the, the drilling, right? Uh, or whatever. There's the cooperative stuff that you do, whatever shape it takes. But then you glove up and you spar to see what works. I, I, I don't know if I agree that the stuff that came before the sparring is necessarily different from JKD and therefore called cross training. You see what I mean? Yeah, I guess it's more structure, on not So cross training would be just, so I'd say it would be, I, 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 in uh, 10 o'clock in the morning, so in the morning I do a, um, a Thai boxing session. Okay. And in the afternoon I do a Jiu Jitsu session or a CSW session. And the next day I'll do a weapon session, then I'll do a trapping session. Right. So, but, so what I'm doing is I'm educating myself in different ranges and arts. Right. And then the Jeet Kune Do is, is, is it's a principle based thing, right? So, it's, so then when, you, when you're training the JKD, you, it's a simple single direct attack. You're training all the principles, attack by drawing. Aggressive and direct attack, attack by trapping. They're they're kind of you, you're kind of drawing on them all that stuff that you've got while you're sparring, or while you while you're free playing. Even the numerata, some brother. Do you see what I mean? So you can numerata someone yeah. to just feed, and you yeah. just deal with it uh -huh. instantly, and you're not thinking about what you're going to do. You just add, just add, just reacting. But that's, because that's... but because you're doing numerata, a Filipino Kali drill yeah it's not jkd training for that yeah. si for that simple reason well that is it is that is jkd training isn't it so if someone's just feeding numbers that you randomly well yeah i mean uh, what 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 if what if what if you stand in front of me and i just throw kicks and punches at you randomly yeah would that be Jeet Kune Do training? As in sparring, or is it just... Well... Or just tr training drills, like numerata? Okay. All right, or well, some... yeah, yeah. So we, so, so you don't consider numerata to be sparring, do you? Uh, no, it's kind of a, it's, it's a one-step spar, isn't it? So it's, it's... Okay. So I used to teach it as numerata, sombrata, sparring. So you kind of progress it up. Okay. So if I throw random stuff at you, yeah, kicking and punching, yeah, is that JKD training? To me, that is. Okay. What if we are in the trapping session that you mentioned, right. and I do random stuff at you, and you trap it? Is that JKD training? It can be part of JKD training, absolutely. What if we're in the Muay Thai session and I throw random stuff at you? Kick, punch, elbow, knee, clinch. But I throw random stuff at you. Is that JKD training? Or is yeah, it not it, because we're in a Muay Thai session? It's not. It, it, it can be. It, can, it, it might be part of your, your, your JKD training, absolutely. Mark Stewart, you, you see what I'm doing, right? Yeah, I see what you're doing. Okay, but I, but I would point I would point out that uh, J, J, JKD and Muay Thai are complete opposites. Uh -huh. Okay, yeah. uh, school They're us on the, school us on that, dear sir. <laughs> uh, well, let's go back to weapon centric idea to that uh, that some empty hand systems, if not all, really are influenced from weaponry first. Okay, so in the sense of JKD, we can call that Western fencing. Okay, mm -hmm. so the stance and structure 
of the latter stage JKDs is more of a modified fencer's way of moving. Mm -hmm. At the longer ranges, the stance changes a little bit in its width uh, the closer you get, and it's a little bit more like Mike Tyson boxing. Mm -hmm. All right? But in Muay Thai, basically the stance is different, the structure is more square, the hands are up. Um, the only thing they have in common, really, in my opinion, is Western boxing, and that has come later in Muay Thai. It wasn't originally in there. You know. I, 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 now that you point it out that way, I, I, I see exactly what you mean. Wait, whose, whose microphone is that? Dax, is that you? Is it mine? Yeah, I, I hear, I hear a, a bunch of feedback and echoing and what have you. Hello, hello, hello. Okay, now I don't hear it. All right. Okay. okay. All right. Might not be. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So now back to the weapon centric thing, right? So then yeah. take a look, take a look at the Thai sword, the Da, and how mm -hmm. they play with the sword. It more closely resembles the way that they do their empty hand fighting. You're right. You're absolutely right. I see exactly what you're saying. Yep. Okay. So. So yeah, and but because they're contrasting, doesn't mean that you can't use components of them together. You can, but right. you would have one that's more dominant than the other, and then whatever you brought in from outside of it would um, be modified to fit the dominant yeah. platform that yeah. you use. Okay, well, here, okay, all right. So here's what I want to nail in this conversation. So that at the end of this conversation, we never have to talk about it again. <laughs> okay, <laughs> right? It'll never come up again because right, right. somebody will say something and I'll just direct them to the recording of this conversation, right? And all their questions will be answered, right? So what I, what, what I was doing with you, Terry, is operating from my standpoint that... Everything that you mentioned, the Muay Thai, the Silat, the whatever, the whatever, to me, those are Jeet Kune Do training methods. Because, see, why do we train those things? We train all those things to be informed about them. And the thing that drives us to train it that way is Jeet Kune Do. Yes. You see? So I go into it, I go into Kali as a Jeet Kune Do training method because I'm trying to see, look, you know, look, um, we got to give it to Dax's instructor, Paul Vunak. He's the guy, he's the guy that put the whole idea of attribute training on the map. Right. Okay. So it's like you go into Kali because you're thinking in terms of what Jeet Kune Do attributes can Kali train in help me to acquire and or develop. So my only reason for looking at Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, for looking at Muay Thai, for looking at Silat, for whatever, whatever, is to enhance my capabilities in Jeet Kune Do. So all those uh -huh. things are Jeet Kune Do training methods. Uh -huh. You see, so now I look at the principle behind Numerata. Oh, one guy just randomly tease off on another guy, you can put that into anything that you're doing. You see, because now we're applying the principle behind it and not the specific technique of it. Does that make sense? Yeah. You see, so, so I, I was just messing around with you there, right? I wasn't disagreeing with you or, 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 or see, anything. See, I, I class cross training, not so much like, I say I cross train because I'm doing so I do. I do in Thai boxing, doing combat submission wrestling, doing Jim Fenji Kune Do, mm -hmm. and whatever. So that to me is because I'm doing multiple arts. Is that's I class that as cross training because I'm educating myself mm -hmm. for JKD. Yeah, that's how that's how I structure it. Yeah, right. See, I um because 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 I'm a Jeet Kune Do nerd, and because I try to guard Jeet Kune Do's reputation as closely and as jealously as I can <laughs> I wouldn't I wouldn't I would never use the term cross training when talking about my my Jeet Kune Do, my Jeet Kune Do training or my Jeet Kune Do development simply because there are too many people out there who already have the idea that Jeet Kune Do means to train in a bunch of different systems yeah that Jeet Kune Do is combination training yeah. 
You see, that Jeet Kune Do is when you train in this art plus this art plus this art. Plus. Because re remember what they say, Terry. Remember what they say. Oh, even Joe Rogan says it, right, Mark? W what did Bruce Lee do? He took the best techniques from the different styles. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, so yeah. when, you know, I had somebody, I had somebody, I swear to you, right? So some of you guys might know that I over on uh, Quora.com, I volunteer. I answer questions over there about martial arts and what have you. But sometimes people send me these questions about other topics. I got a question the other day. It was, <laughs> it was if I let my infant child listen to Joe Rogan podcasts, will that increase his intelligence and something else and, and teach him to be more creative or something. Now, only if he smokes weed, only if he smokes a joint before he watches it. <laughs> now, I, don't, I don't know, I don't know if it's a serious question or 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 not, right? But I mean it just I, to me it just it just um it depicts the level of um of popularity you know, that Rogan has, has achieved or what have you. So when, so Rogan for some people is an authority. So when you hear him say that Bruce Lee took the best techniques from different styles, people uh -huh. are going to go with that. And a lot of people, they get their information from a source that they love, admire, and trust. Yeah. And they don't do anything else with it. Yeah, totally. Right. They don't, they don't, research it any further it's like no i like this guy and he said that one plus one is four so i'm good with that that's true you know and i mean who here thinks that that was one of bruce lee's messages listen to me just do what i say because i have it all put your hand up if you think that was bruce lee's message <laughs> Damn, nobody raised their hands. For those of you who are not watching. <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, so, okay, so, but let's make sure that we have, um, that we have totally decimated this idea of Jeet Kune Do being, <laughs> being a, a, a cross training thing. And Terry, I'm not picking on you for using that, <laughs> um, that terminology. You can, you can, whatever it is. Ah, you know what? It leads me to this, okay? Because we talked about this, Terry, I think the last time we were on, about people's best definitions, remember? Your, yes. your, your personal best definition of Jeet Kune Do, right? So you're in, well, except for Mark, because he lives out in the country, but the rest of us who live in civilization, sometimes we enter a thing, and um, if you live in certain parts of the world, they call it an elevator, if you live in the refined, cultured part of the world, it's called a lift, right? So um, if we're in the lift and we got 30 seconds to tell somebody what it is we do as a Jeet Kune Do martial artist, Dax Manuel, what do you say to them? You got 30 seconds. I don't have my timer, but... Um... <laughs> <laughs> oh, I do have my timer. Okay, wait, 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 wait. Wait, I'm going to put you on a... Um, I'm, this this will be your this is your test Dax for promotion to senior full instructor under Dwight Woods. You have <laughs> <laughs> you have thirty seconds, right, to give us your best definition. Okay, I'll say two things. One is the classic: uh, absorb what is useless, reject what is useless, add what is specifically to your own. Number two will be. Uh, you know, Paul Bunak's definition, which is filthy MMA or street MMA. How okay. long was that? That was 21 seconds. seconds. Okay. okay. All right. Mark Black, get ready. Oh, my God. Oh, yes. <laughs> hey, somebody should tell him the rules. You show up on my show, you got to do what I say. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> All right, go. I'm going to go with um, Filthy MMA, because I love Paul Vunak. And I'm going to say um, a martial art that covers exactly all four ranges of combat. So mm -hmm. I do everything. Okay. 18. 18 
Dax, I think he took less time than you, but he borrowed from you. He piggybacked <laughs> off you, right? <laughs> okay, Terry Valor, get ready. Go. Okay, it's an art based on the principles and philosophy of Bruce Lee. It's a principle based system. Terry? Okay, all right. Seconds, huh? Mark Stewart, if you're going to win this, you got to do, you got 10 seconds, man. <laughs> A human style. Hey, wait. <laughs> <laughs> Go. I finished already. The human style. You didn't even let me start. Okay. <laughs> All right. But see, okay, so now, now I shall devil's advocate all of you, right? What if it's somebody who really wants to understand? Do you think that filthy MMA gives them uh, uh, an... Uh, well, not an in-depth, but you think that gives them more than just a cursory understanding? Yeah, because the way we train is like uh, MMA for the street in the sense because there's certain considerations, you know, multiple opponents. Y'all see, see what Dax is doing, right? You know. Y'all see what Dax is doing. He, he knows that Burt Richardson was supposed to be on here with me, <laughs> right? You know, Mr. For the Street guy. Right, <laughs> so, so Dax is doing his best Burt Richardson impersonation. <laughs> Thank you, Burt. <laughs> okay, um, Mark, you, Mark Black, you said in addition to filthy MMA, you said um, you said the four ranges of combat, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, okay. So, because what we're actually look, what we're looking at is, yeah, you, yeah, you. Uh, I, I agree with the cross training thing. I do uh, agree with the cross training thing. Uh -huh. uh, but you've got you've got you've got a you've got basic four ranges of combat which Bruce was working on. Yeah. Uh, you've got your Jung Fang kickboxing, uh, your Jung Fang Gung Fu, which is the base of JKD, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the wall. Yeah. And okay. essentially, um, if we're looking at the if we're looking at it from uh, from your point of view, yeah. Uh, if you want Bruce Lee's JKD, then you've got to have the Jung Fan, which covers, he, he structured it with all the ranges of what you needed. Hmm. The, the JKD concepts is, um, if if you want to go on cross train, I'll go with what Godan said, it will be your JKD. Without Bruce's base format, it will be your JKD. No. It wouldn't, it wouldn't be Bruce Lee's JKD. No, Terry, Terry doesn't agree with that. I mean, not Terry. Uh, <laughs> Mark, Mark, does, Mark doesn't agree with that at all. Right, Mark? Which Mark? Who are you talking to? Yeah, I'm talking to you. Okay, what, what? agree with what? You don't, you don't agree with what, with what he just said? Uh, no, I don't, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, but you should, but you know. Um, you should explain to him why you don't agree. <laughs> well, I say, I mean, if I had to really explain to someone what it was that we did, uh, I would want to kind of get them away from the idea of styles. Okay. Yeah. And I would explain that it's about mind, body, and spirit. It's about, uh, I'll go with three ranges instead of four because ah. I have five four ranges. Okay. okay. Wait, Stay, wait, yeah. wait, pause for a second. Mark Black. Listen very carefully, okay? Listen I'm very listening. care. Okay, go. I'm listening. Okay, so yeah. Uh, so you want me to to extrapolate on on that point right now, or continue the, with? What uh, I'm but, okay, so yeah, because you brought up you brought up something very important. Three ranges. Why would you say it's three ranges? Um, because it is. Um, trapping is not a range. Trapping is a tactic, and uh, trapping can be done. When I'm outside of kicking range and I grab your leg. Uh -huh. so anyway, that, that's that's my example. But uh, getting back to my point, um, Wait, and plus, it's my point. <laughs> it's okay, my well, show. You got to do it my way, man. <laughs> okay. What the hell? What what else can I say? <laughs> no, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm just yeah. So I want to explain to them that we learn from a process of compliant partner training. Mm -hmm. to semi-compliant training, to mm -hmm. non-compliant training, and that it has to be all tested empirically. Simple, right. direct, non-classical. Simple, direct, non-classical. 
See, this is, this is, this, and, 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 and I'm not blowing smoke now, but this is what I consider to be beautiful about Jeet Kune Do. Because what you just said, it's different terminology, but it's uh -huh. similar to what Terry was saying. You see, because when you talk about compliant, semi-compliant, non-compliant, and Terry talks about when you go spar it versus when you drill it, uh -huh. you see, there are levels and degrees of compliance between drilling and sparring. Yeah, right? that's what Matt Thornton was talking about is aliveness. It has to have aliveness. It yeah. can't be stuck. It cannot be stuck in the compliant mode. Right. See, so, so this is the thing, right? And I don't know if this is the problem, if it is a problem or what. Notice that we are all either saying the same thing or similar things, uh -huh. but differently. Yeah. Now, I don't know if, is that a bad thing? You know, should we all be on the same page, thinking the same way and talking the same way all the time? And that's what it would take. Um, uh, that uniformity is what it would take to move it forward. Or is it possible to move forward with disparity? That's Sarah. a great question you asked because if you look at the success of judo, BJJ, you know, it's because they have a lot. There's still politics, of course. There's, you know, what I mean, but there's they have a lot more uniformity, and where JKD. Um, you know, it, it's it's it, it, it's not really there as much as in these other styles. Yeah. All right. Well, let's beat up on Mark Black again. Right? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's go back to that that thing about about you. you I, I don't know if I, I think you said that Inasano said it that in Jeet Kune Do concepts, and I'm fairly sure you use the word without. I'm fairly sure that's what you said. So in Jeet Kune Do concepts, without the Jeet Kune Do base or something like that, is that what you said? Yeah, what I said was um, uh, Jeet Kune Do concepts mm -hmm. is uh, an offshoot of actually having Bruce Lee's base of Jung Fan Gung Fu. That would be Bruce Lee's, and that would actually uh, relate to it being Bruce Lee's JKD. If you went and cross-trained in numerous martial arts, Mm -hmm. That would be your JKD, but it would not be Bruce Lee's JKD. Because you have to have the base of Jun Fan Gung Fu for it to be Bruce Lee's expression. So that, hence why we hence why we actually train with Go Down with that original material, and then we go off and do our own thing. Okay. All right. It was, okay. on, it was on one of his interviews. Okay, now I now I get it. Now I get it. So so if I train Kali, Box Frances, and Penjaxila, that's not Jeet Kune Do. That's not Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. That's not Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do. That's your Jeet Kune Do. But, but that would be my Jeet Kune Do. Yes. And Dan and Asano said this in an interview. Yes. On, on his, uh, on his uh, JKD box set. Okay. If you can put your hands on that specific... Cause re Mark, remember once you and I were trying to find a specific um, yeah, interview yeah, of yeah. Innes Annals? Okay. Yeah. Black, if you can find that find and send it, it to you. me. Yeah, that, that clip yeah. or what have you. Yeah. Um, yeah. Because... <sighs> I don't know if I can do this in front of the world. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I, I, no, I, I don't think I can do this in front of, in front of the world. Um, no, I'm not going to do it. Uh, so, um, okay. But now, okay. So Mark Black. So what if, what if I train in what people call Jun Fan kickboxing or Jun Fan Gung Fu and Kali Box front says and Sila. So I do have a 
base in Junfan. What is that now? Is that now Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do or still my Jeet Kune Do? That is, <laughs> that is, that is Bruce Lee's Jeet Kune Do based on his principles. What you've learned is his base principles and understood his principles and understood what he was working on and then made your own JKD from that offshoot. Because each time, when you actually, when you actually learn Jun Fan, or uh -huh. Jun Fan Gung Fu, uh, you, you are then going to actually find out what works for you. Because all Bruce Lee was ever trying to do was trying to find out what worked for him. Uh. And, huh. well, and he, he actually dissolved trapping eventually. He got rid of trapping because he didn't need it. Well, maybe he didn't. No, but we, but the rest of us do. <laughs> right, I'm not him. No, I'm just kidding. Right. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's okay. What, that's what that's what Guru Dan said. We are not him. Right. Um. I yeah, but you don't you don't throw you don't throw, throw out the baby with the bathwater. And it's also it's a little bit too yeah. easy to say that only Bruce could do it. That's bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> All I know is that I couldn't do it. <laughs> right. Um. So. I think this is a serious, I think this is a serious issue um, because I thought we had solved it, the idea of what constitutes a true Jeet Kune Do methodology and what doesn't, but apparently it's a bigger task than I can <laughs> handle, but I'm not done. I'm not done. I got 54, 54 more minutes before we have to go, uh, before I got to go teach. Um, all right. So, uh, Mark, all right. Raise your hands if you subscribe to the notion of four ranges of combat. Raise your hand. As they were originally put out, yes. Somewhat. Somewhat, yeah. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Terry Valor. I, I'm going. I'm going to nick what I uh, uh, heard you say. So there's three ranges of combat and four levels of uh, skill. So kicking, punching, grappling, weapons. Okay. So now that's what you said. Okay. So Mark Stewart, you said that trapping is a tactic. Yeah. Okay. Or kicking and punching tactics as well. Or can they be tactics as well? Oh, they're, they're, they're tools. Uh-huh. Yeah, so I kind of break things down a little bit differently, but um, just so okay, I go. can understand. Just so okay. I can understand. Okay. <laughs> go, because because this is actually one of my on-the-fly experiments, right? Okay, so go. So are you talking to me still? Yes, I'm talking to you. Can you not see me looking at you? Are you talking to me? <laughs> Uh, yes, yeah, Travis, so, I'm uh, talking to you. Yeah, trapping is a tactic, right? And so <clears throat> it, the, the problem lies in the misunderstanding. Well, I don't know. How can I say this the right way? Since originally trapping in Jun Fan Gung Fu came from Wing Chun, a lot of people got stuck with those tactics. Trapping goes way beyond that, like um, uh, what Terry Valor was saying. Uh, I, I prefer um, stuff that you get in Greco-Roman wrestling to any of the Wing Chun trapping. Mm. Okay. Is grappling anyway, so a tactic? Is grappling a tactic. a tactic? Yeah, so it's not a range. Yes, the Wing Chun trapping is done at a specific range, but you know what? I wouldn't even define that as close range. I would define that as middle range. Mm. Because mm. it's done at a false range. It's not done with the idea of penetrating with your strike. So there's a lot of things wrong with it. <laughs> so... What are you saying? <laughs> I'm what, saying that... Mark Stewart, what are you saying? I'm saying that... Because um, I got the evidence right here. <laughs> no, I know, no, no, I'm not saying that they didn't do it. I'm just saying that it's not for me. Okay, but did you hear my question? Is grappling a tactic? Uh, grappling is a tactic, yes. So kicking and punching are tactics striking. as well. well I, would, I would call that striking. Striking yeah, is a too. tactic. Grappling is a tactic. Trapping is a tactic. Yeah. Ah, okay. So, and then what are ranges then? Uh, ranges are <laughs> depth perception. 
Yeah. Oh, so how many of those are there? I say there's three ranges that have <gasps> overlapping qualities. <gasps> Mm -hmm. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? There's not four? <laughs> Sacra blue, no. right? Okay, so there's yeah. long, middle, and close quarter. Yeah, but then there's the and outside and inside of each one. Well, yes. I, I, I like overlapping qualities myself. I like the overlap because that requires more flow. Overlapping. Well, yeah, flow. Because, because long... And middle will overlap. Oh, so there, yeah, so yeah. there's like yeah. there's like long, long, and long middle, yes, and long yes. short, right? Yes, yes, yeah. yes. Okay. Yes. So, so then you get into yes. weave and flow, don't you? So yeah. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. So all right. So now tell me what you think, because because here's where I think a lot of us were. Well, I'll, I'll just tell you my story, and I'll go back to Paul Vunak because. You say whatever, you think whatever, I guarantee you. I wouldn't be here to a certain extent if it wasn't for, for Paul Vunak, right? Now, I can remember clear as day where Vunak broke down the idea of ranges. Kick and range, the extension of the leg. Inside of kick and range, was punch and range, the extension of the arm. Inside of punch and range was trap and range because at the extension of the leg or the extension of the arm, you could not use the elbow and you could not use the knee. So trap and range was inside of kicking and punching. And in trap and range, you were close enough to make use of all of the natural weapons on the body, like 14 to 16 yeah. weapons yeah. or something. And then grappling range was that clashing with, with the opponent, right? So this is 1986 or so, maybe when, when, um, you know, when he put out that first Panther Productions series. Uh -huh. And that made a lot of sense at that time because word range denotes distance a lot of people if you use the word range they think in terms of distance so if you say there is kicking range and you say that kicking range is the extension of the leg a lot of people now start thinking that kicking range is long range. Yeah, I, I, I uh, you know, the way Vunak would break it down to me and, and the way I, I kind of interpret it now is, you know, there's kicking range, which is for, for also for like, let's say a short weapon, which is the range you'd want to be in, in a, in a fencing match. If you had like a, a knife or a short machete, you'd be uh, kicking range or just outside of it. Okay, then there's boxing range, right? Then there's uh, trapping or what, what uh, Bruce Lee called ha hands, head, or leg immobilization. immobilization. So when, when you think of it that way, it's, it's wrestling, clinching, right? Or at least the, 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 the outer extremities, the head, the arms, the legs, that's trapping range. And you could sink in your headbutts, your short punches, your, your knees, your elbows. And then once you get belly to belly, right, that is your, your, your closest range, if you will, you know, grappling or the grounds, you know what I mean? And even the ground, you, you know, you could separate that. They, even the Gracies kind of also teach it that way too. You know what I mean? That there's, you know, open guard and, and so forth. And, and once the guy gets standing, there's also different ranges on the ground as well. So um, I think it, it, it is useful but it's not something that you should uh, get too caught up in because, as Mark said, they interlap, you know, and, and in the heat of battle, they kind of just uh, flow, for lack of a better flow. term. Okay. So, all right. So, have we, have we decided on anything here? <laughs> <laughs> all right. See, because I, I, I don't want to circumlocute and, and, and not actually arrive at 
a conclusion or, or something. Um, so what about this? There are four skills or tactics or aspects or whatever. Kick and punch and trapping and grappling. And they can be performed at long, middle and close quarter ranges and at their overlaps. Yes. 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 Mark Black, you with that? Yeah, I am, yeah. yeah. See, now, the reason why I made a big thing about this is because I consider that to be a perfect example of the continued evolution of Jeet Kune Do, where at one point, 30 something years ago, the explanation sufficed. But later on, there was a refinement of the thought. And we realized, well, maybe it's better expressed this way. But what we had back then, Mark Stewart, who else was talking about ranges of combat? Besides the JKD uh, clan. Oh, gosh. Um, no, I, I, I would just say, well, I don't know. I, I, I don't have an answer for that question. I'm not sure who was talking yeah. about it. See, I, I, to me, ranges of combat, methods of attack, methods of defense or methods of counter offense or whatever, attack by drawing, attack by combination, progressive indirect attack, Single, uh, simple direct attack, simple, simple angulated attack, or single, depending on your variation, right? And what did I miss? Um, and then immobilization attack. Those, to me, are perfect examples of Jeet Kune Do's proprietary language. Yes. I could be wrong, but I don't think anybody else was talking martial art that way out besides the Jeet Kune Do clan. No. Yeah, it's the it's a scientific mindset. Yes. Yes. Yeah. And these are the things. See, these are the things that I think we should we should relish, we should preserve, yeah. and we should be infinitely proud of. Yes. Because these are contributions that the Jeet Kune Do clan has made to the martial art world at large. Yes. Because when you get everybody, look. I know Taekwondo people who talk about phase one, phase two, and phase three. You know, you know that they were not talking about phase one, phase two, and phase three in, in June Ree's day. <laughs> okay? They had to get it from somewhere, right? I'm not saying they got it from us. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying, right? Um, so... I, sometimes I feel like with all the pettiness between the JKD people, we miss the forest for the trees, as they say. One of these days, who, okay, raise your hand if you're familiar with Russell, Russell Conwell's Acres of Diamonds story. Okay, then I will reserve... Where's he going? Is he going to check the computer on it? All right. Okay. So I will, it, it actually is um, a topic that will be uh, uh, handled on the broadcast. But I just want to see if you guys were, were fami familiar with it. I, I think that with, with, with thought to reiterate, with all the pettiness in the JKD clan, we don't see the magic of what it is that we have. Amen to that. Right. And, and that's one of the reasons why stuff doesn't go forward. But now I want I want you to t tell me what you think about this. The. The going forward, right, the promotion of the art, the propagation um, of the promulgation of the art. Is never going to be. Through an organization as such, instead. It is going to be a result of the multiple efforts of a bunch of individuals. As opposed to, well, we have this uh, Jeet Kune Do organization over here and, uh, you know, um, 
and as a member of this organization, uh, we are this and this and this and this and this. That ain't gonna, as we would say in Jamaica, that na make it. Well, you, th there's that quote from Bruce that says, uh, you know, you, it's not an organization that one can be a member of. You right. either get it or you don't. Right. Yeah. You know, so so I, I don't think that we will ever be able to to um, that we'll ever be able to to hope for that type of thing. Now, feel free to have whatever association it is that you want to have, you know, but it is. So if a guy sets up an association, the art can move forward as a result of his or her efforts. But. The idea that we will have some, um, what would you call it, uh, overseeing body, right? And then that Jeet Kune Do organization is the one that will do it. I don't know. I'm I'm just I'm just talking out loud here. I um, yeah, I can't I cannot I can't see that ever working. Yeah, because all of us all of us are too um, independent. Yeah, but see, but in my worldwide Jeet Kune Do organization, right, <laughs> <laughs> right, Mark Stewart, I put you in charge of Southeast Asia, right, <laughs> and I, I task you to go over to India, right, and sort out that mess over oh. there. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> don't, don't even remind me. <laughs> right. I yeah. yeah I put I put you in I put you in charge, um, Terry. I put you and Mark Black in charge of uh, the United Kingdom, right? Uh, because from all reports that I have received, because you know everybody comes to me, <laughs> right? There are way too many Filipino martial arts schools advertising as Jeet Kune Do. Right, so I task. Where did that come from? <laughs> <laughs> I task the two of you, right, to clean that up. Okay, Dax, when you recover from the injury, and you show up to the military, yeah, that's your job. You got to go show the military what is true Jeet Kune Do and what is not. Exactly, be because they might be thinking that Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, right is what Jeet Kune Do is. So that's going to be your job, right? Got you. Okay, I think I've covered the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> right? I've covered the whole world with my little uh, Jeet Kune Do organization. Um, no, but it, it, it's, it's, it's really, um, it, it's, to me, it's, it's fascinating to just, to just see, um, you know, different people's, uh, outlook and what have you, but Mark Black. So, what did you think of um, of what I just said about the continued evolution? Because you started out with your breakdown of whatever, and whatever, and then everybody else chimed in. Did it change your way of thinking? Will you have a different uh, way of explaining now, or are you like, well, you guys, you know, it's it's okay. You have your opinion. I still have mine. I I, I say I work on my explanation certainly um because what i get is i get uh, i get people asking me all the time do mm -hmm. i actually do that mma stuff because they, they don't have an understanding of what the jkd thing is or or of um or what the over because most people only understand or only see uh mma or they see they see conor mcgregor i've had a, i've had a lot of people come in the door actually wanting to be the next conor mcgregor um, yeah. So they see MMA, yeah. So mm -hmm. my general explanation is being: I do this MMA stuff, and uh, I've got this Filipino weaponry stuff. I've got I've had guys actually ask me if I, if they can train in that stick stuff. Um, so generically, uh, oh. to put it across, um, yeah, I just I just say it's um, either dirty MMA or street MMA, yeah. They, they are the only definitions you can come up with because it is for the street. It is for the street. Uh -huh. That's a good yeah, simple so my, way to. That's a good simple way yeah, to put yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. MMA yeah. for the street, and yep. uh, a certain a certain other gentleman's actually said that previously as well, haven't they? MMA for the street. 
<laughs> yeah, the yeah. Two, two, two of them, the real uh, Burt yeah. Richardson and then the Burt Richardson I mean, <laughs> imposter that's here with yeah. us today, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay, all right, but I'm going to beat up on you a little bit because that wasn't my question. <laughs> okay. The question. Okay, here's my question. We were talking about four ranges of combat. Yeah. Mark Stewart expressed himself differently. Mm -hmm. Terry Valor expressed themselves differently. What I'm asking you is if you now have a change of mind as to how to express that aspect of ranges of combat when it comes to your Jeet Kune Do explanation. Right. I would say that it's opened my mind to the trapping and how trapping is viewed. Uh, what I would say is, does it actually change my format and how I express that? Then no, I wouldn't because uh, a lot of people do see the trapping as something separately or as, as, a, as a unique element of it. Really? Uh, as something separate? Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, man. Um, you I know get, who's I to blame for that? Me. Paul Vunak. <laughs> Paul Vunak is to blame for that because he's probably the first one that put out a, an entire video about trapping. Yeah. Oh, man, I, I get people asking me, when do we get to the trapping stuff? <laughs> That's cool. Oh, wow. That's cool. That's yeah. cool. Yeah, and I, I got to say, man, I got to say, I actually, I actually really love doing the trapping stuff. Okay, I do love it, and, and I do understand what uh, what everybody's uh, saying about it, and that it's not really a range. It, it is a it is a tactic and a process. It really is. Okay, but I have people, I have people wanting to do the trapping element, so I have to cut it down to the four ranges. I have to because people are actually looking at uh, they are looking at those ranges, and they actually like. Especially the women. The women like the trapping. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's do you teach do you teach Chi uh, Sao, Mark Black? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Yeah. No. Um, I try and combine the Chi Sao, the Hubert, uh, and the JKD trapping, and try and make them as useful as possible and functionalize them as much as possible. A bit difficult mm -hmm. with the Chi Sao, but but it is workable. Come so, on. Yeah, I, I, I actually come on. Have a lot come of on, namesake. Come on. You know you want to say something. I'm talking to you, Mark Stewart. You know you want oh, to no, say no. something. No, no, I, I, I still do chi sao as well, but I've mo modified it somewhat. Um, and I like to grapple from it, grapple and strike from it. Functionalizing it. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 What did, yeah. what, did you, what did you think of his comment? Uh, and everybody chime in on this. What did you think of his comment that? The, I, I think you said Mark Black. The, the trapping is a separate thing. Uh, I, I think the the, tra the trapping is part of that four range group, uh, so that makes it its individual thing. Because you rep it, you still rep trapping. You rep kickboxing. You rep bo uh, boxing. You rep trapping. Okay. You rep grappling. Because okay. repping enables you to build muscle memory, right? Right. But here's Which the thing. Up to okay. All right, so anybody want to chime in on that, on on trapping being uh, uh, its own thing? Anybody? <laughs> Everybody froze. <laughs> it, it's my show, but y'all are allowed to talk. <laughs> you can train it specifically, but like you can train your striking specifically. Yeah, like you yeah. Train your grappling yeah. specifically. You can yeah. train it specifically. Yeah. Okay. Mark Stewart, chime in. Well, yeah, I mean, you, it's, it's important to isolate it, but um, it has to fit with everything else if you're going to keep it. Yeah, yeah. Dax Manuel. I'm probably a bad person to talk about it because, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I'm going to be honest. I, I just think people spend way too much time on it and they, they look way too into it. You know, look, man, you know, if, if it gets in your way, you know, get it out of your way. But but people spend a lot of hours, and I'd rather be doing boxing drills, jujitsu drills, double leg takedowns, fencing, than playing patty cake. Yeah. Hey, Dax, I got to tell you, at, at a certain angle, right, your hat, it looked like, um, did you ever see um, Full Metal Jacket? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Back right? So you know the hat the gunnery sergeant wears? Yeah. I want you to get one of those and wear it next time that you're... <laughs> I got you. 
<laughs> it almost it almost looked like that. Okay, all right. So okay, so here's what I'm I'm gonna throw out. It cannot be isolated in any shape, form, whatsoever. Here's why. You don't. And again, Paul Vunak is to blame for my thinking this way. Here's <laughs> what Paul said on the tape. You don't go like this. Did I beat him? There mm -hmm. is no such thing as Paxal, Lapsal, and you won the fight. You have, and then if you look in, in the pages of um, uh, Jun Fan Jeet Kune Do, the textbook, right, Chris Kent and, and Tim Tackett, it says it right there. You trap to do something. Right. Uh -huh. You uh -huh. trap to hit. Uh -huh. See? So you trap to punch, you trap to elbow, you trap to kick, you trap to knee, you trap to take down or whatever. Uh -huh. So it's not isolated at all. I think the isolating is the, the, right, the tactic, aren't you, rather than isolating at all. Yes. So you're not yes. just going puck you, you yes. know, you yeah. isolate an attack, should we say? So perhaps a lop cell, perhaps a wedge, perhaps a jail cell, or no. uh, or over hook underhook. No, you can't even do that. You know why? How do you get to it? How do you get into a position where you trap? It starts Something there. has to happen it starts, before. Yeah, it starts there. It starts yeah. there. Oh, what we do to enter the dragon and we no, start no, at the no, attack no, position? No, no, no. Then what do you no, mean? No. no, it means like um, we're at kissing range. I used Mark, on the door. Mark, I like you a lot. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, I got standards. Are you trapping on the nightclub door? Huh? Are you trapping on the on nightclub door? Well, see, okay, but no, no, seriously. All right, so understand this, right? Because I have gotten myself over decades in a ton of trouble because when I do what I'm doing now, what I call devil's advocating, People think that I'm like trying to beat up on them for real, right? And that that is not what I'm doing. Okay, so just 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 so you guys know, right? Okay, so if you are in the nightclub setting, it's completely different. Right? You could start there. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. But that's yeah. not the only setting that exists. You see what I'm saying? But you could, you could do it on the dummy. You isolate on the dummy. Yeah. Well, yeah. well, I mean, on on, on the on uh, on the on the nightclub scene or uh, doing doing the doors, you just you talk about a live environment. You could get away with a single pack sound on, uh, on a, in a in a live environment that could actually um, put some off balance. So that would be one pack sound. It may not lead to anything. Uh, it's, it, in that case, it would be considered to be a well, parry if you pack Okay, but wait, 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 wait. But if it doesn't lead to anything, is it effective? Or you're just buying time. Effective. It gives you time. Yeah, buy that, time. I just say buy time. Okay, well, then buy it time. is leading to something. Yeah. Uh, it depends It depends on what happens to the actual opponent that you've just taken out, even if right. it's a pack down. But it is leading to something. Hopefully, them on the floor. Yeah, right, exactly. So, right, <laughs> right. So the the reason for the pox out was to affect some kind of toppling over. <laughs> so it was pox out to off balance, right? Mm, yeah. 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 See, so this is why I'm saying, I, I, I'll never think of it in terms of isolate. And now I get what you mean by the isolation of the the practice of it. Yeah, okay, right? Yeah. The repping yeah. out and what have you. Yeah. But yeah. to think of trapping as somehow distinct from kicking, punching, and grappling, uh-uh, uh-uh. No. It's a consequence. I get yeah, I get what you're saying. It's a consequence yeah. of all that stuff. Yeah. And remember, totality is what we're seeking, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yep. Right? So now, here's my problem with a lot of what you see and I and that's you tell me if you if you um are, are are into this. Okay. So for convenience, let's say that they start at the high outside reference point. Right. And here's what they say on video. Now nobody fights this way. <laughs> so right there, breaks on. <laughs> then why are you showing this? Yeah, yeah. 
Yeah. You see? Because now all of the Jeet Kune Do detractors are going to look at your video and they're going to go, well, this guy's a moron. He's supposed to be Jeet Kune Do, which is all about the street. And he's showing me something that they train in Jeet Kune Do. And he's telling me nobody fights that way. So why do these Jeet Kune Do people train it that way? Right. And, and, and often um, a problem that I see with trapping is a problem I see it, certain, uh, and I used to do the same thing. I used to do this exact same thing in that somebody does a move and you can do two or three moves to them, you know, magically while they just wait for you hanging out there. You know what I mean? <laughs> or maybe they might throw another pot and you're definitely going to trap that one too. You know what I mean? And they're definitely not going to try to grab you, but they're not, definitely not going to try to hit you back. It's, it's the idea of uh, what you call measure in that in any given or tempo of the fight is that there's only so many things you could do to him before he's going to react some way. So it's not compound trap into a hit into another compound trap into a hit. No, it's trap into a boxing combination, trap into grappling, trap mm -hmm. into something else. You know what right. I mean? You see? Yeah, totally agree. Totally agree. Right. It's trapping with a direct result. Yeah. So, and so, it, should so, be, it should be simple and it should incl include angulation. Yes. Amen. Yeah. Right. See? So, again, Mark Black. So, if you understand now, so, so maybe yeah. it's just a term, it's a terminology yeah. thing, right? But this yeah. is why when you said isolated, I was like, well, I don't know if I, I don't know if yeah, I fully so, agree uh, with that. Yeah. You got to, you got to, um, I guess depending on the people you have in the room, you got to uh, you got to a, to a degree isolate uh, for them to learn, which is why I always do the whole learn rep and pressure test. Okay. Um, so so you you uh, to a certain degree, whoever you've got in class, you've got to like break it all down. So right. Uh, so again, you're actually still you still actually. But uh, be careful. Isolating. Be careful. Don't break it down too much because then them girls in your Absolutely. class will use it against you. <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, right, Mark, Mark, Mark Stewart, you know what those girls do? They try to trap the, the, the cute instructor, <laughs> right? <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> That's what they do. They're good at that. <laughs> <laughs> right? Did you ever hear Francis Fong say one reason why girls are good at Wing Chun and the trapping is because of Wing Chun? Because of the nun and, 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 her, and her student, right? Did you ever hear that, Mark Stewart? No, no. Yeah, he goes, if you look at Wing Chun, Wing Chun is a lot of this. <laughs> he goes, that's how girls fight. <laughs> right? Um, so, so, but, but I was, what I was telling you about, about the people that you see demonstrating, trapping, and what have you. Here's my biggest problem with them. Well, I have two problems. One, they do the reference point. They do not explain how that happens or why that happens. They don't seem to understand that they, they don't put it into historical context. Uh -huh. Bruce Lee dealt in this era. Yes. You see? So if you lead at somebody, you encounter a high outside reference point. So they should at least explain or demonstrate that. You see? Now, here's the other problem. Mark Black, you said it earlier. Towards the end, Bruce Lee dispensed with trapping. Uh-huh. Right? Well, isn't that... I mean, he could have dispensed with that whenever he wanted because the objective was never to trap. The objective was always to hit. Uh-huh, yep. Right? But when you see people demonstrating trapping... Nobody really looks like they're trying to hit because they're trying to demonstrate trapping. You see? So people do what? They go like this. Well, if I go that far, I'll never bash him in the face. <laughs> right? So they show you this. Can I curse on my own show? They show you this <laughs> weak ass punch. Right? Yeah, it's, a, it's a false distance. It's a false exactly. Range. You got to stop showing that yeah so i'll give you the remedy you go for the real distance the guy backs up and he parries you now you trap him 
you, as the Jeet Kune Do guy, do not throw a weak ASS punch that he traps and then you and that he parries and then you show, oh, look, look at the great Jeet Kune Do trapping technique. Forget that nonsense. You got to explain to people what is really mm. happening. The uh -huh. essence is hidden. The essence is not trapping. Mm -hmm. Trapping is a consequence of your intention to hit not being successful yep. and what when what mark stewart said it's got to be simple and it's damn good if it has angulation on it as well absolutely you see absolutely. Yeah, so because it, look it, the thing is when you when you begin to do it functionally is that when you can get the angle and use the angulation there is no defense against your strike from being trapped right you get hit Great. you get hit yeah. there is no defense yeah. right you see, so, so, so there's, there's, it's understandable to me why somebody like Dax would have no interest in it because he's yes. looking at it and he's going, mm -hmm. well, the way they're showing it, that don't make no sense. You know, so it's like, <laughs> and so I'm done with that, right? Makes perfect sense to me. But if only people would have a more realistic approach to it. You know, because when you, when you see them, you know, when they do this and then they go here and then they wedge, you know, and then yeah. they do it on, on this yeah. side. Yeah. Yep. What the heck is the purpose of the wedge? Yeah. You still haven't hit. You still haven't tried to hit. <laughs> All you have done is gone from left lead to right lead. It's just a method to get the reps from two sides. Wedge in a technique. Because you're not hitting. You really think, right? Look. Okay, so here's the deal. Mark, um, did, 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 did you ever hear Inasano talking about the secret trapping techniques that Bruce Lee didn't want him to show? Mark I never heard it. No, I, no, I'm sorry, okay. I never heard it. No. Okay, so this is this is what I heard. All right. So let's see, let's 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 see if I if I can pull it off. So so again, for convenience sake, people, this is why I'm showing the high outside reference point. For convenience <laughs> sake, right? So we're here. I trap and he parries and he does the, the hold in center line parry. You know, the one where we would do the inside paksao or the double paksao, right? All right. So instead of this hand going to do the inside pop sound, this one hits. You see? So I tried to hit him with this hand. It didn't get through. So I just turned the energy off in this one, and I hit him with that one. And then I if there's... I remember, I remember learning that. Yeah, I remember right. learning that. Then if there's anything left, now I trap and hit him again. So I tried yeah, to right. hit him once. It didn't work. I ended up hitting him twice. Uh huh. That was secret technique. You see, it's not. I try to hit him. I wedge, and now I try to hit him on this side. Forget that nonsense. Yeah. Well, right? essentially, essentially, that principle comes from chi cell. If I have forward pressure, whether mm -hmm. I'm rolling or not, if I clash with forward mm -hmm. pressure, and he leaves that forward pressure in an opening it's a hole right so the that has to be expressed in other the other facets of what you do it's, it's yeah. the essential that's where it comes from i think sometimes what what it is is that um you, you know um somebody said it to me um i forget who it was but somebody said it. ah okay now i remember right but it's really only uh, maybe in the, in the jkd world and online that um that anybody gets to say whatever the heck it is that they want to say. And, and that people who really know nothing at all speak like authorities, right? Because I, I don't think, right? Even though I know there's politics in, it, in every martial art method, I don't think that um, on a, 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 a Kyokushin um, Facebook page that a guy who read Masoyama's book and starts talking, I think everybody just goes, okay, you shut up. 
<laughs> but in the JKD world, right? In the JKD world, that that doesn't happen. And and sometimes I wonder what the source of that is. Is it because the founder died without leaving a blueprint, so to speak? I think Bruce Lee was too vague in his description. He was too, yeah, he, he had too many versions of what he was saying it was. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? You mean at one point he said boxing, fencing, and, and Wing Chun, and then at another, uh, at another point he said, there is no such thing as a distinct um, yeah, yeah, method yeah, that of kind fighting? Of that kind of stuff, yeah, yeah. That confuses you? Not me. Me neither. Me. <laughs> <laughs> me neither, because I look at it and I go, oh, evolution. Yeah. Right. But what right? I'm saying is that, no, I'm just saying that's what gives people the ammunition to, to, to like speak up without knowing what the hell they're talking about because they, uh, they, they don't uh -huh. understand, they don't understand that it can be two things at the same time, you know? Yeah. Also, Jeet Kune Do is never what I'm not good at. If I'm not good at it, you know, it's, it, it's, it's, if I suck it, if I suck at it, it's definitely not going to go. Right. Yeah. That's, that's, exact, that's exactly what Ted Lukai Lukai would say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, he yeah. said the same thing, man. Yeah. I, don't, I, don't do high, I don't do high kicks because I can't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I think ultimately the, you know, one, one of the biggest problems is that um, that people gloss over the idea of removing your, uh, uh, the idea of using Jeet Kune Do to remove your limitations. Mm. Uh -huh. You know, because one of the only ways to do that is to work hard. Yeah. You know, one of the ways to do that is to work hard at the uncomfortable things. Mm -hmm. You see, and every, everybody has more fun working at the easy things, e even if they do work hard. Right, yeah. but, ima but imagine if every day you had a commitment to working hard at the uncomfortable things. Mm. You see, if if that was if that was part of your daily routine, then you know, I think I just came up with another topic for uh, the the broadcast. Yeah, I'm quite happy with myself. Yeah, very good, very good. <laughs> hey, gentlemen. Um, I got to run, right? But I thank you very much for uh, spending part of your Friday night because, Terry, it's it's what? Midnight by you now uh, or 1, 1 a.m.? 10 to 1, 1 right? 10 to 1. Wow. Oh, yeah. wow. Yeah, 10 to right. 1. Uh, Mark, it's, Mark, your day now starts. It's going on yeah, 8 a.m., uh, right? Yeah, yeah 7.48 a.m. here. Yeah. Whoa. Get on the bicycle. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Well, listen, guys, I really appreciate your spending some time with me uh, to, uh, tonight and um, go out there, do your best. I wish you all the best. Right. Have a great weekend. And um, we'll do this you again. Too, guys. Definitely. Thank you, sir. All right. Yeah, okay. Thank you, guys, take care now. Thank you. Right. Take care. All right, so that was um, episode 162 of the, oh shoot, I lost my point. Yeah, I think 162 of the Jeet Kune Do Dialogue. So, um, comment and uh, let me know what, what you thought of uh, the discussion. Um, I won't be able to do it tonight, but uh, tomorrow when I, when I finish up with uh, teaching duties, I'll take a look at what people are talking about. And if I need to answer anything, I'll go ahead and, and answer it. Um, follow me on Twitter at Dwight Woods and on Instagram at Dwight D. Woods. And uh, next Friday, uh, at this time, we will have just finished talking with my old time colleague from uh, the Northwest, uh, Chris Clark, right? Um, he confirmed it will be on at 6 p.m. Bert Richardson apologizes for not being able to, uh, to do this, but he's got, um, he's got special guests uh, with him uh, in Hawaii for a little while. And so he had to uh, pay attention there, but he promises that he'll be on as soon as uh, he's got a, a fixed uh, schedule that allows him to do it. 
All right, so that's it um, for me for uh, today. Um, yeah, so thanks to all of you who uh, caught the live show on Facebook, even if you didn't come on the program with me. Um, I think we'll try to do these um, uh, group stuff like every every month and a half or so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll do this. And But we'll definitely do it if at, if at any time at the last minute one of my guests is not able to come on the program or what have you, right? Okay, so enough talk from me, right? Uh, you guys uh, enjoy your weekend and uh, stay safe out there and uh, we'll talk soon. All right, this is Dwight Woods, the Jeet Kune Do Rebel signing off. All right, take care. Backyard Carly, double sticks, tire, bag, we're going to go for cob cob today. Open chamber, we're going to hit a 45 degree angle, hit it to the head, hit it to the head, hit it to the body, body, knee, knee. Be aware I'm also using my hips and my full body to generate more power. So we're going to go head, head, body, body, knee, knee, head, head, body, body, knee. And that's Cob Cob for you guys. Thanks for tuning in.